Hello YouTube, today we're going to be continuing with the bug rig tutorial series and here is a quick little example of something I've rigged up in advance to get an idea of how I'm going to do the head turn so we're going to be working on this today as you can see I've just done a little test animation here we've got the left pose if I stop playing it it goes from left to right I've just added in some quick little spine movements to show how we could do that sort of movement We've got these antennas moving. At the minute I've just put like a, if I open up my things, I've got expressions on here and here, I'm just gonna turn these off so I can show you what these do. So I've got these four controllers on the pre-comp layer and we can turn this slider which will rotate our head like so which is nice. Um, I've got these antenna bends so we can control how much these things are bending by and that's what I had the wiggle on to make them do like little bouncy movement because this is going to be a run cycle I figured they would be bouncing so I just tested a quick little wiggle, wiggle expression on that. I can then individually control the rotate of the antennas and I have this blink controller which lets us blink these pupils. It's a bit of a so how an eye should actually work, but artistic license and all, I think that looked quite nice. And I made the conscious decision to remove the eyelids that we previously had on this character. I thought visually that just looked a lot better. And finally, I've built this little null here to control the pupil position. So we can move this around. This kind of green box kind of shows us the limits of where the eye can go which is really useful to have. So yeah, I'm going to walk you through how to rig this and this is all contained within a pre-comp which any animations we do on the outside we can see in here and focus in on a little bit more. So that's what we're going to build today. Let's jump into Illustrator and I'll show you how to prepare everything. So let's start this tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so in Illustrator, I've prepared this new version of the head. As you can see, I've made the antennas nice and straight. That's going to be because it, I'm going to use the script I released, Bendy Nulls, and we're going to use this to bend these from a straight shape so we get more flexibility in the, uh, the actual bend movements. Um, I have this middle pose, which is if we isolate just the head and if I press control Y you can see the circle for just the head layer is dead in the center of this new middle pose which is kind of a triangular shape the way I see this is because we have this kind of pointy end to our head so when it's looking at the camera it should be more facing down more of a triangle shape and finally I've got this left template layer which is everything we have here but just flipped to the left side so if I turn all this off so you see this is just the left of this and that's all we need to get started on this head rig so I'm just gonna save this and we're gonna jump into After Effects. So this is picking up directly from the old tutorial where we'd rigged up our character's legs and arms. So it's exactly where we left off. We're just going to import that new Illustrator layer. That's archive, not active. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm slow to find things this morning. All right, here we go. Head. So we want to do composition, retain layers, import. Right. So we're going to start building up this head. So first thing we need to do. I'm just going to lock this background. And middle pose. Is we need to break apart the head layer. Uh, 
Um, so if you right click on the layer, you can go to create and then shapes from vector layer. Just going to delete the old one and on head outlines. I'm just going to call it head again because the outlines things annoys me. So what we're going to need to do is start with this path position, which is for the no shape. And what I'm going to actually do is solo this layer so we can see clearly. So the way I build these rigs is you you link the the data of all the keyframes to a slider which goes from 0 to 100 0 represents the left position and 100 would represent the right position so because we're starting from the right position I'm going to go to one second and put my first keyframe there and the way the slider will kind of work is 0 seconds will be 0 on the slider and 1 second will be 100 on the slider if you go to 2 seconds that would be 200 on the slider and 3 would be 300 and so on so because we're doing a turn from 100, 0 to 100 we want to build all of our keyframe data within this area so I'm going to hit N I'm just going to zoom in here and this is where we're going to put all of our data for the morph between the head shapes right so this is why we have the extreme left pose I'm just going to drop the opacity down on this layer to about 40% I'm going to do the same for the head so as you can see here just by dropping the opacity as you can see these circles perfectly line up this is what we want so now we're going to move this over for the head so this doesn't have to be perfect but obviously the, the closer you match these shapes the better and it's just a case of manipulating all these handles to get it to look the same as the original version Don't do that. Okay, so that's looking okay. So if I show that again, you'll see we've now got this shape disgustingly moving like that. So 12, 12 frames, by the way, will be 50% on the slider, and that will be the halfway point, which will be when we're going to use this shape. So bearing in mind, we don't need this middle pose to look that great because what we're going to do start building it now we're going to have the opacity of this layer turn on on this middle frame essentially so when it's here we don't want to see it so we're going to put that to zero and we're going to copy that frame here so we only want to see this shape in the middle and we need to fill out all the areas between one zero and one second so we need it to be continuously zero here continuously zero here so we get this flicker in motion now so then what we're going to do is we're going to just put keyframe in the center here because this is the middle point between right and left and then I'm going to copy the value from the left position one frame away from the middle and I'm going to copy the value from the right position one frame away from the middle as well and then what I'm going to do with these frames is just select these two keyframes hold and shift I'm going to pay attention to how many increments I move it across so we'll play it by ear but we're going to go one, two sorry I'm going to zoom out a bit more so it moves quicker one, two, three, four I think so that was at 100% four shifts and then I'm just gonna drag this until it 
sort of covers over the the circle shape in the corner there. I think that looks okay. Uh, so we're going to go back to 100%. We're going to select these two this time, and we're going to go one, two, three, four. And again, just going to move this top handle to about there. So these two frames should look roughly similar, but on the opposite sides. And then we've got this middle frame. So this opacity structure, we're going to copy. We're just going to paste it onto the head. We're going to hit T for opacity. And we're going to reverse it. So we need this one to be 100. Copy this. Paste it here, here, and here, and this middle one, I'm going to make zero. So now we have this kind of transition shape, a snap point, another transition shape, and like that. So we get this kind of motion where we can see this middle frame if we want. But the way I'm planning on using this animation, I'm probably not going to use this middle frame. So it's mainly about the easing between these points and these points we're going to be using in our actual sliders. But it's nice to have the middle point if you do need it. Right, okay, so we're going to continue to build this. So what we need to do now is the biggest part next is these eye shapes which I'm just going to quickly color code this so R as I said previously when I use colors anything that's on the right side I like to call red and then complementary colors so anything that's on the left I go green and then I'm just going to make all the head features fuchsia and I'm just going to make this mouth yellow And I'll just make this one future as well, the middle post. So for me, when I see these colors, I understand this is left side, this is right side. These are anything to do with the hair shape, and yellow is the mouth. It's just a hierarchy I've put together. You can do your own, but it really helps. Okay, so let's turn this left template back on again. So as you can see, I'm missing an eye. One second. Where is it? There we go. So we need to do the same with the eyes. So we're going to do the position and rotation of these. So again, position, rotation. Starting from the right pose to the left pose. So this right eye needs to move over and rotate maybe 45. For now I'm just going to move this in line with here so I can see it above because currently it's below the head shape so we want to make sure we're lining this up nicely with I always press that bloody button with our shapes here so we're just trying to fill in these shapes like so and again, with the left eye, which is here, this needs to rotate 45 degrees. And we're just going to slide this over here. Like so. So now our head moves and our eyes sort of follow the shape we need. We'll go to 12 here. And we will line up these positions as well. So I'm just going to turn the left template off. In the middle pass here, I'm just going to drop down to 40 for now. And let's line up these eyes here as well. So this looks like it's the 45 position too. And we're just going to move that to there. 45 again. Okay, so this one's minus 45. Like so. So now we've got these eyes that feel like they rotate around the shape of our artwork. 
which is what we want. But now we got the problem where this eye needs to be behind this shape when it's in the right pose, but above this shape in the left pose. And the same with this one, in the left pose this needs to be behind and above in the right pose. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate both of these eyes. I'm going to move the right eye up here. So this original right eye, I'm just going to put it back down where the pupil is. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to hit tilde quickly. And we're going to I have not got key pose on, I don't know if that's that useful. Let's just turn this on. Bad practice to do it halfway through the tutorial. So this is the one that tells you what buttons I'm pressing. <coughs> I apologize for not having it on earlier. Okay, so these two layers, I'm gonna hit U, and we're just gonna remove all the keyframe data. We're gonna hit hold Alt, click the position here, with the pick whip, pick whip tool, it's going to drag down to the position of the left layer. I'm going to do the same with the rotation, and we're going to do the same for the right layer to this one here. And what this has essentially done is these layers are now so sorry. This I two, we're also going to move down here next to the eye at the back. So what this means is if we turn these eyes off we've got the back layers now. So what we're going to do is basically control the opacities now. So we'll start with the right layer. When this is at the left we need to see sorry we need to do it on the top layers, my bad. When this one's here, we need it to be at 100%, so which means here, so it's going to be 100%, and anything after the 50 point, we're just going to turn it off. Like so. So now we can see this is where it needs to be, and then now it's where it needs to be. This one at the top here needs to be the opposite, so we're going to turn this to zero. So, and then here it's going to be 100%. So now we have these shapes that are following our structures. So we've got the right turning nicely, and then it switches to the left, and that's got some nice turn on it as well. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, let's just do a save. Drink some coffee. Okay, so next we're going to do these pupils. Because we started in our right pose, what we need to do is let me just double check this. What am I doing with this again? I did the pupils differently. Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to come back to the pupils whilst I need to think about how I rig those again. I'm just going to turn that off for now. Um, let's do these antennas. So, we're actually going to create shapes from these antennas. So, we're going to go to create shapes from vector mask. With both of them. I'm just removing the word outline. I hate that it does that. I named my layers in Illustrator nicely for a reason. Right, so we got the right and left antenna. So we're going to need to key in these position values to make sure that they match up with the head. So these antennas, we're going to just drop behind the middle pose. 
like so. That position actually looks pretty good. I think this position will be good as well. So with the antennas in all three poses, they're in the right place. However, it's these poses we need to slightly adjust. So as you can see, the eyes kind of like this left eye, for example, kind of moves out to the left and then comes back in on itself. So in this position, this left antenna, we're just going to kind of put it, I'm going to kind of join this edge here with the, the, the uh, I can't get my words up, the corner of where the eyeball meets the head. And I'm going to do the same with the right. So like so. So when this rotates, we get that sense of motion in the antennas as well. So we're going to do the same here. Like so. Yeah, I'm happy with that. This isn't joysticks and sliders, by the way. I mentioned I was possibly going to use joysticks and sliders, but I decided against it. Joysticks and sliders is, in my opinion, a lot of work to set up, whereas I prefer to do this. I feel like I get more control of my rig, but you do get more flexibility of joysticks and sliders that will enable you to do up and down positions. And this is just a left to right rig, but for what I needed it for in this run cycle, I thought this would be more effective, in my opinion. Bear that in mind, this is not joysticks and sliders. Um, okay, so we got everything moving now. How did I do the eyes? <clears throat> I'm actually just going to quickly open up my old file. This is cheating, but I want to just make sure I do it right because I parented them. Be rules linked to Yep, okay. There's a good reason for why I do this. Right. So with the people we are going to create a null in the center. The best way to do that is by using motion 2. So let's just open that up. And let's just dock this somewhere, maybe here. All right, so no motion 2 has this awesome null feature. It's my favorite one. So if you select a layer and you click null, it'll create a nice layer null layer for you in the center so matching up the anchor points so now wherever this moves that's where we need it this is good so what we're going to do is we're just going to call this pupil l i'm just going to call it cl for control layer and what we need to do is duplicate this pupil layer and we need to have one above the eye here too. And then we're going to just copy these opacity values onto the topmost pupil. Like so. So then here we're going to. going to link this to the eye so wherever the eye moves this pupil follows it I'm just going to do the same for the right pupil but we need to duplicate this and put it up here so we can actually see it
And again, we're going to copy these opacity values onto the topmost layer. Call this one pupil RCL. I'm just going to label that one red. We're going to link it to the eye position again. This one needs to be linked to that new layer. Hmm. Sorry, this is a real. Yeah, that's what I'm doing wrong. These aren't linked, so we don't link these. I was just thinking through my head there, that's not going to work. Because as you can see then, I'll go back and I'll show you why that won't work. Because they're linked, you see how these eyes rotate. We then get the pupil rotating and stuff, which is ugly. We don't want that to happen. Which is why I built it this way. So we do need these layers. What we're going to do is not rotate them. And we're going to do the position values of these layers. So we're going to position in the left and right positions. So on the left, we kind of want to slide these over so they roughly match up to where they were before. So it's still quite early. It is only quarter to nine in the morning. My brain is not fully functioning. My coffee hasn't even kicked in yet. So I'm making a bit of a balls up with these eyes. So here we're just going to then dial these values independently. I'm just going to put this one here and this one there. What I'm trying to do with this is just make sure the pupils are always touching the edge of the shape. In these middle poses, I'm just going to make them roughly in the middle. This doesn't matter too much. But this is basically what we're going to be using as a guide to make sure our pupils are always roughly in the right position, like so. So now when we slide through this, we can see that's moving, and that's moving, and they're in the center nicely. And then what we're going to do is going to select this middle pose, use the null feature which links that to the middle pose but I don't want it but what I do want is just this controller here in the middle and we're going to move this to the top and this is going to be called our pupil controller I'm just going to call it pupil control and make that yellow and then these two nulls I linked this control layer. So those nulls now follow the shape, but this control layer lets us adjust that overall positioning, which means we can then follow the shape but adjust the actual positioning of those eyeballs, which is what we want. So I'm just going to press Command Z, put that back in the center. And what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate these eyes layers, put them above, call it mask and we're just going to go to on the pupil layer alpha mat the mask so what this is going to do is when the pupils go out of the eyeball shape you can't see them, you can see that one because that's the rear pupil because we haven't done a mask on that one yet so we're just going to do on all four pupils a mask layer label everything nicely so we know what it is. So now we've got all the masks. Whenever we move this, the eyes move out of these shapes and we can't see them. Which is great. 
So we're almost there. We've got everything moving. We have a slight problem with this pupil. That's the left pupil. Um, not sure why it's doing that. Let's just unshy everything. Sometimes soloing causes issues. Okay. What is going on here? This mask is gone weird. Let's delete that. Let's redo that. Not sure why that happened. Let's make sure this works this time. Yep, okay. Let's call this mask. Don't know what I did there. Yeah, now we go over working, except the mouth. Oh yeah, I've made this mouth a really horrible square shape. <laughs> I will explain that now. Um, I'm going to go create shapes from vector layer. Let's see how this is done that. It's a path. Okay. I, I basically don't want a path. I don't think there's a way to change it back. I have a script that would do it, but not installed on this machine. So what we're going to just quickly do... Let's recreate this square into six point. So drop this to six. Doesn't have to be perfect, just similar, like so. So this is going to be our new mouth shape, which we're going to delete the old one. I'm going to call this mouth. <laughs> I just deleted it. Uh, make it yellow and uh, we're going to use the null again I'm going to call this mouth CL for control same again we're going to use the null that null is I mustn't have had the layer selected when I could ah Right, yeah, my anchor point's in the center. Click this button first, which moves the anchor point to the center of the shape layer. Then make the null. Now the null is controlling it from its actual position. Mouth CL, again, yellow. Plot the position. Roughly line it up. I'm going to just nudge this to the edge like that, so that's kind of touching that edge, so I've got a reference point over here. Like so. When it's here, I'm just going to move that to bring it in a little bit further since the f we're seeing more of the cheek now because the face is turning. And again, like so. Let's just compare those points and see if they look similar. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect, but we'll make it as close as possible. Oh, yeah, if you didn't know, J and K jumps through any visible keyframe. So if I press Command A, hit U to hide everything. And then if we select just these mouth controller, these are the only visible key keyframes. So if I click J, it will jump between back between our keyframes and K goes forward like that. So it's a nice little shortcut for jumping between poses. That will do, I think. So now we've got this mouth following shape too, which is very saving. So with this mouth, we're just going to come in here. So we have this rectangle. So inside the rectangle, we can change the roundness. 
I'm just going to change this up to about 20. That looks about right. So now we've made a circle. And currently, the stroke and the fill are contained within the the contents of the rectangle. If we drag this above it, it will disappear. And then this rectangle, if we put it above, we'll see them again. And the way you pay attention to the way this is stacked, if the strokes are above below the fill, the fill will be on top of the stroke. So it depends on what look you want. You might want that, but I don't. Um, this size now, if we unlink this, we can stretch the mouth like this, we can close it down, and when it gets to zero, you can see we've got this sharp edge again, whereas I quite like the cornered round look. So what we need to do is go to the stroke and change it from a butt cap to a round cap. So now if this goes to zero, ah, oh, sorry, we need to do the joint round joint because it's not the end of a stroke because there is no this is a solid shape there isn't a, a end of the line so it's the round one we need to do now we can do this with our mouth so we can kind of do these cool mouth movements I'm going to be having this dude running away from things from something which I'm not going to tell you what yet so I'm probably going to want him to do like a huge scream so this is great for that so that's why I use the square. So now this new mouth shape follows our head turn. Like so. Um, I think that's everything we need to do to plan this out. Yep, that's looking good. So now we're going to move on to the marrying it up with this current body we have. So if we run back here, we've got this head shape. What I'm actually going to do is just hit tilde. All the other head layers I'm just going to delete because we don't need them anymore. So we just got the head. And I'm going to come in here, the first thing I'm going to do is this anchor point which we wrote earlier on the last tutorial we're going to need again, so I'm going to drop rulers in on this anchor like so and then I'm just going to hide motion 2 we need this head oh yeah this head has a background in it, let's get rid of this for now, we don't need this anymore I'd like to do that instead of working against the black right so what we need to do first I'm just going to go to one second when the head is in its right pose because that's where the right is now we need to just drop the opacity of these layers and I'm just going to solo them and I'm just going to line this up so it's in the same position like so that's what we need and then we're going to hit Y and make sure that's there so when we rotate this head layer now it rotates like the rig lastly this is parent to 39 which is the neck let's parent that to there and we can delete that head now and we're going to make this fuchsia crank the opacity back up so now we need to start ah one other thing I'm going to do this antenna is the antennas are currently out of the canvas so I'm just going to press control K untick this lock aspect ratio and I'm just going to add another 500 pixels so we can see the antenna and I'm just going to create shapes from the background hit scale and just crank the height up 
so that we can see the whole antenna like so right let's start doing the expressions the fun part so we're going to need the head layer selected and we're going to go slider control this gives us the slider as I mentioned earlier earlier left is 0 and right will be 100 we're just going to rename this slider by clicking enter on it and clicking calling it turn so we need to write an expression on all these layers which extracts all this keyframe information and links it to that slider so what we're going to do in this composition we're going to open up the select effects control panel we're just going to click this padlock what this does is when we leave the composition we still have the slider there so we can reference it easy so what we're going to do is we're going to alt click one of these these keyframe values and we're going to start writing out our value at time expression which lets us manipulate all the shape data with that slider so first you want to write control and then space equals with the pick whip I'm going to select our slider so what this is saying is look for composition running which is that layer there dot layer so then it's looking in the layers panel for the layer called head which is our pre-comp uh, which is this layer but it's on the pre-comp inside the running composition dot effect so it's looking for an effect called turn which is this and turn is a slider so that's how that references that and then we get this nice expression error because currently we're referencing this slider but we don't know what to do with it so I'm going to return now we're going to write value lowercase v um, expression language in After Effects is JavaScript and JavaScript uses a structure called camel case so if it's referring to um, if it's one effect and it's got multiple Jesus Christ my words are not working so this is value at time is the the thing we're trying to use the at would be a capital A and then the time is a capital T so camel, ca camel case looks like lower value and then you get these humps of capital letters where you are defi define it further so it's the value at a specific time and then we're just going to hit space two brackets in here we're going to write control which is our thing we defined here as the slider and we're going to divide control by 100 so as you see this pupil's disappeared because the position now is at zero so it's snapped to our left position so if I turn this to 100 we'll see it again I'm going to leave it at zero and then what we're going to do just copy expression only going to press command A hit U and again so we can see all of our keyframes going to hit tilde so basically you just want to go through all of these now and hit command paste command V even control V to paste this expression onto all of these values like so Right, I believe that's everything. So now when we slide this, ah, you see this isn't live because this is in a different composition. So now what we can do is come back into this composition and when we slide this, we'll see everything moving nicely. So we've got some weird slight opacity issue in here between these final key poses which I'm not going to fix in this tutorial the way you would stop that from happening 
as you would properly at the moment because I'm literally going from um, here 100% to 0% on these poses and just flicking this middle pose on we can't see it's linked to the slider now um, you get this slight fade out so the way you should do it properly is in the path of the actual head layer you'd spend some some effort merging this shape perfectly to fit that middle shape at 50% so if I crank this to 50 so you want that path to perfectly create this new shape and that would have meant we'd have to keyframe the actual circle as well like so but I'm going to be using this as a more of a snappy animation so I won't need this middle pose necessarily so that's the way I chose to do it this way it's just quicker and easier and for the sake of the tutorial I don't want to waste too much time because I'm aware this is already going to be a long one but that's how you not get this opacity fade essentially anyways so now we've got right and left so what we're going to do now as you can see the right here the circle base is in the right place but on the left the head doesn't feel like it's in the right place because we've slipped shifted the layer but we haven't moved the pre-comp because ideally this needs to be probably there so what we're going to do I'm going to use that null trick again Uh, I'm just going to quickly unlock my guides. This one's in the right place because I extended the composition size. I need to correct this one. Like so. Um, and then we're going to add a null to the head as a controller. I'm just going to call this head control CL. Make it fuchsia. So we're going to link this to the neck. So we're going to do position and anchor point. Again, one to a hundred. Zero, zero to a second. Sorry, for the one, the zero to a hundred on the slider. So this is the right position and anchor point. So when this is at 100 that looks great however at 0 it doesn't so what we're going to do is on these layers here we're going to just slide this layer into it feels like it's in the right place which is about there so minus 18 then we're going to adjust the anchor point this is really fiddly actually <laughs> I forgot how friendly this point is because adjusting the anchor point moves the layer. So it's kind of like a, you basically want to keep the anchor point in the same point. Actually, can we just press Y? <laughs> no. Okay. So what we basically want to do is just keep adjusting these until our anchor point. Is on these margins, but the head feels like it's at the edge of here. Which we're getting closer now. Like so. So now we've got this moving. So we're going to do the same expression again. Control equals uh, slider. Semicolon value at time. Making sure we've got the camel case going. Two brackets. 
control divide by 100. And we're going to copy and paste that onto here. So now our head moves and the neck feels like it's connected to our spine. And now because this is this control is parented to the neck. When we rotate this, we can bend that and it will still feel attached. So this is why I wasn't too fussed about using joysticks and sliders because I can do combinations of rotating this neck and the actual head itself. Sorry, not the head layer. We'd need to rotate this layer, I believe. To get these extremes looking down and looking up, and I think that works just as well. Okay, getting there, getting there. So now we've got this slider working. One of the last things I want to do is be able to control these antennas which actually we should have done before we did all the expressions um, is there a way to disable all the expressions I have a feeling there was but off the top of my head I can't remember okay I'm going to do something counter counterproductive here I'm going to hold alt select all these layers and drag down and what this is going to do is delete all the expressions because I forgot to do the antennas and it's just easier to do it when everything's moving left and right in this composition and not referencing that slider I am however missing the head let's just do those two as well right so these antennas are going to be using my script bendy nulls so let's get that set up I'm just going to have some water first get a dry throat okay so if you'd seen the installation demo I'm not going to show you any of that because you should know if you don't watch the installation demo so this is my tool bendy nulls we're going to select the antenna left, hit bendy nulls. This is going to create a start and end point, which I'm just going to select these three, just solo everything for the time being. The start, I'm going to move to the bottom of the antenna, like so. The end, right to the top, like so. And because they're parented, when these come in, I built the script so when you create these null ends, when you click the button, it will make these nulls and they instantly parent to the, the layer. So wherever that layer moves, the nulls move with it, which means when we apply the bend, the bend is always attached and moves with it, which is great. CC Bendit doesn't usually do that, and that's why I made bendy nulls. A bit of self promotion there. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to move these antennas above these behind eye layers. I think it would look nicer if they could slightly cut, like so. So I'm just going to move this one up as well. Right, again, solo this layer, bendy nulls. Let's just position this, like so. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a bit of flex to these so they're not pointing straight up in the left and right positions. So we're going to start keyframing these bender effects. So I quite like the idea of them flopping sort of like this. So I'm going to go from minus 40 on both of these. 
in the left position and we just go to positive 40 on the right position in the middle pose I'm going to want the right one to be about let's just go in the middle 20 and the left one to be minus 20 so we got this kind of middle pose and then we get these pose now what I kind of don't like about this is can you see like it's kind of an arc like this it seems to swing really high which frankly doesn't sit right so we're just going to slightly adjust the length of this this part of the shape during the rotation so we're going to come to it be group two I believe yeah so it's behind group one which is the green stick we're going to add a trim paths so it'll be the end we need to shorten so we're just going to keyframe the end like so but then here in the middle I'm just going to shorten it slightly so maybe just down to 85 let's see how that feels no it doesn't feel like it's it feels like it's turning now as a piece if you look at the left one it's kind of got this big wild swing whereas that just feels like it's more naturally turning which is what I want so I'm going to copy that trim paths onto the same part inside here That just feels a bit nicer in my opinion. Right. So, do I need to do anything else before I apply all these effects? I'm pretty happy with that, I think. So, what I'm going to do Command All, hit U, U again. write this expression again I don't have that reference there so let's just get this turned up actually what I'm going to do is remove it from this layer and paste it onto this head control layer so we can essentially lock this head layer and we'll control everything on this layer it would have broke this expression though because these are referencing a control on this layer which no longer exists so we just need to update this section of the code to just affect because it's on this layer so I can literally just delete that part and it will work right, so we're going to lock this again so we can reference it here so control equals Turn value at time camel case control divide by 100. That's the one copy expression only hit tilde. And we're gonna pretty sure I did it, but command everything you and you to make sure we got every keyframe available. Let's just paste this stuff out. Hopefully, this tutorial teaches you some things about repetition. Because <laughs> I've 
come back a few times. Right, so now everything seems to be working pretty cool. However, let's make it better. So currently we can't control any of these antennas, so let's create two more sliders. So I'm just going to duplicate these. I'm going to call this one antenna. I'm pretty sure that's not how you spell it, but who cares? Bend. This one I'm going to call antenna. And that one's going even different again. Um, rotation. So, what we're going to do. We're going to find our antenna layers, this one. The rotation is going to simply pick whip up to this rotation here. Haha, <laughs> no one up. <laughs> we have not turned the CC bend off. Our anchor point is there, which is a nine. But if we click this button on motion 2, it will move it to the bottom, which is where we need it. So if we rotate it, it rotates from the bottom. We'll do the same for the left. I'm just going to turn CC bend it back on. Lock this again so we can see it. So now we're going to hit Alt, pick whip to that rotation. And it's moved it all the way down there, which is not what we want, but it's fine. Again, rotation, antenna, rotation. So I think if we set this to zero, they'll go back to where they are, because they're currently at 100. So now we can move this to control our antennas. Great. That's what we want. Antenna bend. So what we want, we've got this nice bend when we slide this of where the antennas roughly should be at each pose but that's no good because we want to still control these antennas so we're going to hit E for effects with this bend code we're just going to add to this so basically what we want to say is the value at time references this control layer which is our turn but we want to do extra stuff to it so after these these brackets, we're just going to put plus, and we're going to reference antenna bend. So now, by default, zero will be anything the controller is doing, and then we can add more. So we can bend it further, or we can go into minuses and bend it backwards. Pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to do that again on this one for repetitive sake. Value at time control divide by 100 plus big whip antenna bend. Now when we slide this we're controlling everything. So then we can rotate our antennas and do some bend. So the bend is really good for secondary motion on the rotation so if the rotation went back a couple of frames later the bend can still go back then the, as it's still bending back this can begin to go forward to get this nice overlap sensation and eventually the bend can catch up that's a really nice way of adding some secondary animation okay cool that's the antennas done Last, next thing I want to do make another slider I'm going to call this blink not blonk blink so these pupil layers I want to blink them like this and I want to be able to control this so I can stretch them out so when you look scared I can control that and create a blink so what we're going to do put that to 100 again I'm going to hit alt and drag up to this blink slider and this will write a bit of code for us which reference this part is temp equals 
same as how we wrote control earlier, so I could write control again, and then if I do this it will fail because it's saying temp and temp no longer exists, but if I put this to control and control, so, so what this is basically saying is control equals that slider and then we got an array, an array is these values here so inside the square the first control is the x scale the second control is the y scale so what that's currently saying is when we change this it will grow that pupil on x and y however I only want it to do it on y so in the x control I'm going to replace that with 100 so 100% so now, when I scale this, I get a blink, which is what I want. So, copy expression onto all the pupils. Like so. So now, if I put that into zero, voila, we have a blink. And finally, mouth. Let's do something similar with this mouth shape. So I want to be controlling this this size in this rectangle. It might be useful to be able to control this as well. So let's do let's change this to mouth width and we'll change this one to mouth height so size pick width up to mouth width so this is going to say control temp equals that slider so what we're going to change this to, instead of temp, we're going to put width. And we're going to return under this part. Copy this code. I've not copied it. Actually, no, no, we're going to write it. So we're going to write height equals pick width to the height slider. And we're going to put a semicolon. So instead of temp temp, temp doesn't exist anymore. The x is the width, so we're going to write width, which we've defined as this slider. And then the height is going to be the height, which we've defined as the height slider. So now we can change our values to this. So the width was about 30, I think. And the height was about 40. So now we can control these individually with some nice sliders. So we can change our mouth shapes, which is pretty nice. Maybe we'll either screw it. Let's go all out. Is that a mouth rotation as well? We might need that. Who knows? This one's simple. Just select up to that slider there we go so now we can control a lot of the stuff for our head with just this one layer and then we never need to go into that pre-comp except the only thing we can't control are the pupils so it's just I'm just going to lock everything bar this pupil control so what we need to do is get this to work in here so the way I'm going to do that this is the last thing I'll show you today so clean this up so I'm going to use motion 2 again Make sure I've got nothing selected here. Uh, 
and I'm just going to create a null. I'm going to call this Gibble Control. This bit's a little bit fiddly. So, what we're going to do is hit P and P on here. Let's have some more water quickly. So what we need to do is we're going to drag this head composition just underneath here so we can see both. Uh, let's grow that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is essentially click Alt on this. Damn it. This bit's fiddly because After Effects is a bit annoying with this pick whip tool. It like moves a bit too rapidly. With the pick whip, we're going to pick whip up to this other composition and select that position. And what's that? What that's going to do then is when we're here, it says it's going to choose the position based on looking at the composition, running, layer, pupil control, which we just made, transform dot position. So what that's going to do is wherever this is positioned that's going to copy its position. So that should have, if I solo this, you can see the null is down here. However, the issue is we need that null up in the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock this composition. This part, there might be an easy way of doing, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. And we're just going to go to our running layer, which and then we're going to select the pupil control in the other composition because that's locked we can still see the head composition and we're just going to hold shift and nudge this null until we can see our pupils again and I'm just going to put it there and then we can unlock this so we can see now our nulls roughly here so what we're finally going to do select this layer we're going to hit null again with motion 2 and we're maybe not, maybe we're going to ah that worked for me yesterday for allowing me to move let me just double check, maybe I did something slightly different. Basically what I was going to do was create a null for this so we can just move this controller to somewhere where we want and then you should be able to just move this anywhere within this null and that will be the radius for the movement for the eyes. Uh, let me just double check this last part. Apologies. And then that's this rig complete. A lot to take in on this one, so it might be a good one to watch a couple of times, but it is going to be very, very long. So you can see we've got this null centered here, where if I move that, the null doesn't move, and then when I move this, the pupils move. That's what I'm wanting to recreate. So yeah, that's just linked to that, so I must have done something slightly different with this controller. I haven't, but that is linked to the head. That might be the only difference. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go back to our current document. Let's parent this to the head. Okay, let's fire it all the way over here. That makes more sense. So we're going to have to come in here and sh shift this up, I'm going to zoom to 50% so it shifts at bigger increments. Let's slide it here, this is going to be quicker. Hello pupils. 
Right. Ah, jeez. Struggle to hit that control button at times. Right. So we got that there. So now I believe when we're in this layer, this is fired our composition all the way up here. So now I believe if I create a null, move this, there we go. That's locked it in position. So we can just call this um, control box. So now wherever this pupil moves within this box that roughly maps up with where our eyes are so we have this controller for our eye position so now with let's make these fuchsia we can pretty much shy this layer we can lock and shy the box once we've got it to where we want Where's that box actually? Let's not make that fusion, let's make this like yellow. So now we have this thing to control our pupils. With this layer, we've got all these sliders where we can turn our head. Let me just quickly demonstrate this turn. I'm going to key this slider. Oh yeah, if you hold Alt and Shift and click a property, it gets rid of it. So if you hit U on a, a layer, it will show you all the keyframes. But we don't ever want to touch these keyframes, and unfortunately you can't lock them. But if you hold Alt and Shift, click them away, you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting those keyframes. So we're going to go from zero to let's do it over 10 frames 100 linear animation pretty boring let's make that fun I like to use the speed graph. So if we crank these values, so we get some nice ease in, out, and in. This is going to be our like middle frame, which currently you can see. So what I'm going to do instead of an even number of keyframes, I'm just going to make it odd. So now this is moving over nine frames instead of ten. If I hit render. Mm. get this nice movement you don't see that snappy middle frame and you've got because we built the tight the 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 tight positions with these things we've got all this information here to make smooth smooth eases in and out of positions and that's why this works really well everything reacts so we could then move that we could then add some antenna bend so let's just get that up so we could start from zero here as it's coming over here they could bend this way so they're getting a bit of bit of drag we could add in some rotation as well to emphasize that further drags comes over here as that's slowing down we could then throw these forward like so this is really extreme but you get the idea Take it into the minus slightly, and finally, this is quick animation, so it's a bit dirty and ugly. And zero, it's gonna 
through a little bit of easing on this, but I'm not going to fine tune it, just easy ease that. And then, like I said, of secondary motion, if we move the antenna a couple of frames behind the rotation, rotation behind the head, get this kind of overlappy delay. Probably even lock that another frame. Like so. And if we combine that with rotations of this actual layer. So maybe when he's going here, the head dips down a bit. And then snaps here. Still down. And then maybe he lifts up a bit before settling back down to zero. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial for animation, so that's pretty rough. <laughs> that doesn't look right. It's because we have this frame here where it snaps, so if we just do the rotation like that, slightly better. You get the idea. We can control all this stuff with this one layer, which I like to do. I'll show you the blink. I like to just go maybe... <laughs> I don't like to do that. Um, maybe three frames, just key in zero. Another three frames. Copy the 100 again. In here, I like to just crank these two values. So just gonna pull this up so we have a slow brick, slow open and end point to our blink. Like that. And then we could have it so when he's here, he's looking up and he's scared turns his head here and he's focusing more at the ground and about to sprint really wildly that's not a nice movement <laughs> But you get the idea. I'm just fucking around now, having some fun. We could have done a scream. He could have been screaming like this. Even rotated it. Who knows? But yeah, we've got all this control over our heads in our main composition, so we can control everything in time with our run. So the antennas could be bouncing, like the example animation I quickly did last night. But yeah, that is how you can build a pretty effective head rig using some simple sliders and the value at time expression. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was useful and I hope it will let you create more interesting character rigs in the future. That's all for this lesson. I will be following it up with a run cycle with this same character. So this is where I'll start to look at the actual animation data here, make sure it syncs nicely with the run. And we'll do some interesting stuff then. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.